Chapter 1. Learning is important to the growth of any individual or corporation. Some people are lucky to have the training to break apart and analyze problems early in life. In a way, this makes difficult tasks easier to cope with and reduces the chances of making foolish mistakes. Others only develop problem-solving skills after a series of mistakes, and some people never quite learn it. No matter the category you belong to, consider this summary an asset in your problem-solving arsenal. This tidbit offers ideas needed to succeed both as individuals and organizations. It will also provide tools for destroying bad attitudes and illusions that you might have picked up unknowingly. By giving up these illusions, we can build successful learning organizations, places where people continually spread their wings and enlarge their capacity to create the results that they truly are proud of. Learning organizations help people explore new and broad thinking patterns. Collective ambition and aspiration are set free, and people can continually learn how to grow together. What differentiates learning organizations from traditional controlling organizations is the mastery of the basic disciplines. A learning organization is where people keep implementing new and better ways to create their reality. Learning organizations are built on five disciplines, personal mastery, mental models, shared vision, team learning, and systems thinking. As you probably guessed from the title, the purpose of this summary is systems thinking, the fifth discipline. Keep in mind, the more you learn, the more obvious your ignorance is to you. We might touch a little on the other four disciplines, but we'll focus more on systems thinking. Let's get started. Chapter 2. Chapter two. Organizations can live longer if they overcome learning disabilities. Managers can always overcome poor performance in organizations by making minor changes in design and management. But most companies are rigid once they get big, so these changes become hard to make. Therefore, they stop learning and thriving. The loop continues until they do something about it. Such bottlenecks create organizational learning disabilities. Keep in mind, try not to live your life based on other people's expectations of you, but on what you truly want. Learning disabilities are dangerous and tragic, but they're curable, and the first step is identifying what they are. That way, you can easily find signs of their existence and do something about them. The seven learning disabilities include Attaching your identity to a job description Some corporations train employees to become too loyal to their jobs, making people rigid to change, unwilling to do anything outside their job descriptions, or even inflexible in their roles. Blaming external factors for everything that goes wrong We all tend to find something outside ourselves to blame when things go wrong but we must realize that not all problems have external sources. Being reactive rather than proactive. Some people tend to confuse reactivity with proactiveness. Reactivity doesn't just mean folding your arms and doing nothing. Avoiding future costs and doing so based on emotions is also reactive. Fixation on events. Organizations cannot sustain progressive learning if short-term events dominate people's thinking. We should learn to let things go and always take the long-term approach to everything we do. Overlooking tiny changes because they don't mean anything. Change happens drastically, but that's not always the case. It's important to keep your eyes open for minute changes when they occur. It's much easier to stop future problems that way. The delusion of learning from experience. Direct experience is one of the most powerful learning channels. However, it becomes impossible to learn from experience when our actions have consequences beyond our learning horizon. The myth of the management team. People usually try to protect themselves from appearing ignorant or in dissonance with company culture. But this kind of pretense only hurts management teams in the long run. Did you know? The parable of the boiled frog is just that. A parable. Unless the conditions are beyond them, real-life frogs will jump out of hot water before it's too late to do so. Chapter 3. The fifth discipline is the bedrock of learning organizations. Systems thinking is the final learning discipline, and we'll cover it in this chapter. Starting this chapter by talking about problems makes sense, since systems thinking is all about problem solving. Really, where do organizational problems come from? If you take some time to think, you'll probably come up with a plethora of answers, and none would be wrong. However, also notice that most problems today stem from yesterday's solutions. Think about it. Your department was struggling with team comms, so you decided to get everyone on Slack. Problem solved. But some months down the line, you notice that productivity is going down, and it's traceable to team members spending too much work time on the app. Yesterday's solution became today's problem. Remember, systems thinking teaches that many solutions don't work. They only improve matters in the short run. Our solutions don't last long before leading to more problems because we don't take a holistic approach to problem solving. To practice systems thinking, learn to disconnect cause and effect from time and space. Many people believe cause and effect are always linear, that you can find the cause immediately by simply observing the effect. If there's a fault in the manufacturing process, the cause must be somewhere in the manufacturing department. But that's not always true. Going back to our example, the fact that employee productivity reduced after the introduction of Slack doesn't necessarily mean Slack is the cause. It could be that team members are demotivated and unsatisfied with their jobs, and the Slack app only came as a handy channel to distract them from this frustration. So removing it doesn't solve the problem, but you won't know if you approach the problem from a narrow viewpoint. Systems thinking is needed more than ever in organizations today because the world is battling complexity. Organizations break down despite individual brilliance and innovative products because they can't pull their diverse functions and talents into a productive whole. As humans enter interdependence, systems thinking is a discipline for seeing the structures lying below complex situations. Did you know, systems thinking was pioneered in 1956 by Professor Jay Forrester, who founded the Systems Dynamic Group at MIT's Sloan School of Management. Chapter 4. The last thing you want to do is play blame games when something goes wrong in a system. The feedback concept makes it difficult to discover who's responsible for occurrences or takes responsibility for issues. Each side's linear view usually makes it look like the other should be responsible for it. Truly profound and different insight is the way you begin to see that the system causes its behavior. Danella Meadows. However, in understanding and mastering systems thinking, we shouldn't assume that there must be an individual responsibility. The feedback perspective suggests that everyone takes responsibility for problems caused by a system. Although not everyone involved is at fault, the search for scapegoats has to end. Remember, the feedback concept improves our knowledge of the language and our means of expression. In dealing with complex organizational problems, simple linear distractions don't suffice. Hence the need for feedback processes. Statements about casualties and responsibilities become more defined because of feedback. 
There are two distinct types of feedback processes, reinforcing and balancing. Reinforcing. The reinforcing process are the engines of growth. Whenever you see a situation where things are growing, you can be sure that reinforcing feedback is at work. Balancing. This feedback operates whenever there is a goal-driven or pushed behavior. Balancing feedback works to help individuals and organizations achieve their set goals, no more and less. Growth occurs in a reinforcing feedback system, even though you may be blind to how small actions can scale into large positive or negative consequences. But in balancing feedback, growth is opposed and stability is maintained. Chapter 5. Your personal effectiveness is in direct correlation with how much you invest in yourself. Personal development and self-mastery go beyond acquiring competence, skills, and spiritual growth. Although these are the foundation, in addition to acquiring all those, you must approach your life as a creative work and not as someone just existing. Don't forget, personal development helps you know where you are now and what you want to achieve when moving towards your desired destination. Mastering yourself will teach you to generate and sustain creative tension. This type of learning is generative, lifelong, and helps you produce the results you truly want in life. And learning organizations cannot succeed unless they have people at every level who practice it. Self-development suggests attaining a special level of proficiency in every aspect of your life. It also means that you have a great vision and are goal-oriented. Those who practice personal mastery are inquisitive and committed to seeing the world as it is. And despite being unique, they feel connected to other humans and life itself. True personal mastery involves pursuing and achieving emotional, physical, and intellectual development. As individuals practice personal mastery and development, they experience several changes which they may not notice immediately. Some will require the need to merge their intuition with reality. However, with systems thinking, these individuals can easily and naturally integrate reason and intuition. Did you know, Shell is one of the world's major energy companies employing an average of 93,000 people. Chapter 6. Learning and Developing Mental Models Can Keep Institutions From Failing Companies can develop their capacity to work with mental models by learning new skills. To further amplify their efforts, they can implement institutional innovations that help bring their skills into regular practice. According to Shell and Hanover, you must bring key assumptions about important business issues to the surface, because the most important mental models in any organization are those shared by key decision makers. Companies that create the right culture and team learning environment always have top-performing employees. Managers should also develop good interpersonal skills to make learning more generative than adapt and adaptive. Generative learning is inquisitive and involves a lot of reflection. This type of learning challenges people to think outside the box, positioning them to become problem solvers. Scenario is an effective tool in the pursuit of mental models. It forces managers to decide how they would manage under different alternative paths into the future, instead of assuming a single future. When managers come together to share a range of alternative futures in their mental models, they become more aware of changes in the business environment and more ready to accept those changes. Another tool is formulating operating principles for the organization, which serves to advise and guide everyone on board. Learning organizations are generally good at developing people who learn systems thinking, cultivating their mastery, and strive to collaboratively surface and restructure mental models. Remember, organizations that want to develop their intelligence index must learn to invest in people, systems, and processes. Chapter 7. The Five Disciplines Make Learning Organizations Profound and Possible The five disciplines which include shared vision, mental models, team learning, personal mastery, and systems thinking usually converge to comprise a critical mass. These disciplines help organizations to see learning as systematic and deliberate. As life goes on, more innovations will arise, which may lead to a sixth discipline. The immediate and most important task for all companies is to master the possibilities presented by the learning disciplines in place. Systems thinking teaches two types of complexity, the detail complexity of many variables and the dynamic complexity that describes cause and effect as not close in time and space. The tools for systems thinking aid in the understanding of dynamic complexity. They help see underlying structures and background problems or patterns of behavior hidden in the fury of daily events, providing the best feedback to help move organizations forward. Information processing circuits get easily overloaded by detail complexity, but one aspect of the mind deals very well with it, the subconscious. The subconscious can be trained, and gradually it performs more and more of the task, freeing the conscious mind and giving it the ability to focus on the next stage of learning. Remember, unlike the subconscious, the conscious mind can only grasp so much information per time. The subconscious deals with more details than the conscious mind, and it's not limited by the number of feedback processes it can consider. The most effective people are those who can hold their vision while remaining committed to seeing current reality clearly. Peter M. Senge Did you know, cognitive scientists have shown that humans can deal only with a very small number of separate variables simultaneously. Conclusion Organizational structures can influence behavior because people generally produce similar results when placed in the same system. So we must look beyond individual mistakes or bad luck to understand important organizational challenges or problems. We often have the power to alter structures within which we are operating. We don't notice or see that power, but we usually find ourselves feeling compelled to act in certain ways. Becoming a learning organization involves practicing the five disciplines, sharing vision, personal mastery, mental models, team learning, and system thinking. You can foster a commitment to long-term progress by building a shared vision and developing mental models to help you focus on the openness needed to reveal shortcomings. And through team learning, you develop the skills to look for the larger picture beyond individual inputs and perspectives. Personal mastery builds the motivation to learn how our actions affect our world. And system thinking, the fifth discipline, helps you harmonize all the other disciplines. Systems thinking creates leverage where actions and changes in structure can lead to significant improvements. Learning organizations should identify and do away with learning disabilities that may be ravaging the institution. As discussed earlier, the seven learning disabilities include, but aren't limited to, attaining your identity to a job description, blaming external factors for everything that goes wrong, being reactive rather than proactive, fixation on events, overlooking tiny changes because they don't mean anything, the delusion of learning from experience, and the myth of the management team. These learning disabilities have been around for a long time, and they usually have their consequences. 
However, the five disciplines discussed in the summary can act as antidotes to them. Try this. Fixation on past events is one of the disabilities affecting management teams. Stop this in your organization by doing the following. Create an environment that encourages growth and progress rather than perfection. When there's a major loss, team members should meet and talk about it, then devise strategies for doing better next time. But don't dwell on the past. Identify other learning disabilities common in your organization. Share your findings with colleagues with the shared aim of creating a lasting solution.